Hello everyone, uh, today we're up in Halifax in Canada and we're going to be taking a look at the mixture control on aircraft. Now in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, at least at this time, the uh, mixture control is, yeah, I'm going to say the least, not as intuitive as I kind of know it from uh, flying real planes, but there are some general tips that you can use in order to get the most out of it. So basically the mixture control allows you to dictate how much air and fuel get mixed inside of the particular engine that you're working with. Different aircraft have automated functions for this particular their feature but for us in a Cessna 172 uh, fortunately we do not which means we get to do it the old-fashioned way so to speak so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and take the aircraft into the air and we're just gonna kind of get cruising here oh look at all those pine trees it must smell wonderful right now nice crisp day by the way too I like that also so why do we have a mixture control in an airplane? Well, the fact of the matter is, is uh, we have good fuel technology that enables us to provide all sorts of good fuel to the engine, but we don't necessarily have, at least on older aircraft, the ability to make sure as the air density changes that we're getting the exact same fuel mixture the whole time. Obviously, an aircraft that doesn't have the proper air fuel mixture is going to really, really struggle because it will not be producing as much power and you could potentially do some interesting damage to the engine. Of course, I say the word interesting and damage in the same sentence, but I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. Now, when I was doing flight training way back in the day, the uh, mixture handle was like the one that you never really played with. That was something the flight instructor would always kind of tool around with every once in a while. And it was one of those things where it's like you never really got high enough for it to really count, but you wanted to make it count and you're never quite sure. And realistically, it totally depends on the aircraft as far as how easy it is to set the mixture on a given airplane. Now, in this particular aircraft, we actually have several tools in order to make it really, really easy for us to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself a little tiny bit of altitude here before we start fiddling with the thing. Generally, in mixture controls, you don't actually want to start touching until you get to over 3,000 feet or whatever the manufacturer recommends for that particular aircraft. Again, this particular aircraft, you could technically use the mixture control at any altitude. We could have even used it before we took off. But in order to do so, of course, we'd have to do a very, very aggressive run-up where basically we'd rev this thing up real nice and high fiddle with the mixture until it worked properly and then go ahead and start leveling ourselves off and taking off and all that other good stuff. As a general rule, um, the leaner the mixture, the more heat your engine is going to produce. That heat is actually a good thing in some situations. It's a really, really bad thing in other situations, especially if you're doing something like a nice aggressive climb out here like this. Now, if it were a slightly different day, this would be a slightly different experience. Now, the interesting thing here is that we have a pretty hefty wind, and I think it's uh, kind of knocking us off course here. You can see that even though I'm pointing basically straight here, we're basically uh, going at a funky angle because of the aggressive wind. And the other neat thing is because we're so high up in our latitudes, it's creating us uh, basically an interesting little problem with our directional gyro trying to keep up with everything that's going on with the aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and level off just a little bit in just a moment. One thing I always love about these Cessnas is they're just like the most relaxing planes to kind of climb with. You know, you don't have to work them too hard. You don't have to work them too lightly. So let's go ahead and get that all set up. I'll flip the flight director on. I don't need that right now. Um, let's go ahead and set my vertical speed mode. It's pretty safe. We'll set it to 500 feet per minute. It usually gets us a pretty quick climb. And we'll also go ahead and flip on the navigation mode. I'm not going to be touching the mixture until I get a little bit of altitude underneath me uh, for, again, simply safety reasons. If you ran into a situation where you started working that thing pretty much right away, you could, again, run into a situation where you overheat. Plus, when you get full power like this, that extra fuel actually helps to cool the engine down. Yeah, you're going to lose a little power in the long run, but it's not going to really cause nearly as much trouble as you probably think that it could. Okay, so what are we gonna be using as far as the mixture control itself goes? The first thing we're gonna be interested in the actual mixture handle itself. Now for me, I have a button on my joystick that allows me to adjust it, but a lot of folks, you can actually click on it. I love the fact you can actually push the button like in the real one. In the real one, by the way, this is a knob that you could twist in order to get the mixture perfect. We're gonna be looking at the mixture control handle. We're gonna be looking at our RPM, which is basically our primary indicator. And we're also going to be looking at the exhaust gas temperature gauge. So what does the EGT actually tell us? Basically, it tells us how efficient our combustion is going on. Now, at one point, way, way, way back in the day, if you wanna go back to the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and you had these very, very large propeller-driven aircraft, you could actually do this by looking at the exhaust color because again, these engines are running tremendously hot and you could basically tweak the mixture until you saw just the right color coming out of your exhaust pipes. That's not necessarily something I would recommend doing in uh, an aircraft like this. That just doesn't seem very safe and not to mention we have better tools to do it. So now that we're climbing and we're getting a little bit of altitude here, let's see what happens when we mix, change the mixture just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm just again being gentle. The first thing I notice is the RPM suddenly went up. Go ahead and put the mixture back to where it was. 
Nice. You also notice that my gallons per hour, which is my fuel consumption, went down. Take a look at my exhaust gas temperature. I'll go ahead and do it again. Did everybody see what happened? Our RPM spiked, and our gallons per hour actually spiked as well. Go ahead and give the mixture back in, it actually drops. In the real world, that is the inverse of what normally happens with that. What would happen is your gallons per hour would drop and your RPM would go up, but that's okay for our purposes. Let's go ahead and cross 3,000 feet and then we'll go ahead and do it. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our RPM to peak, our exhaust gas temperature to peak, and then we're basically going to give it just a little tiny bit of extra fuel. So I'm gonna go ahead and slowly pull this knob out and you're just going to watch the RPM. Again, I'm pulling it out just a little bit. See, we're about 2,410. Notice my exhaust gas temperature is coming up a little bit. 2,420. Keep pulling it back. Keep pulling it back. All we're waiting for is this number to stop going up, and I think we found it. Of course, if you pull it back too far, that number will start going backwards. Whoa, 2,440. This helps if you move at the constant speed, by the way. Okay, there we go. Did you see how my gallons per hour started decreasing? This is because now we're on the other side. Pull that out. Too far. Give it a few more RPM this way. And you can see my exhaust gas temperature has actually peaked. So right now we're at what they call peak power. That simply means that our fuel burning, everything, our combustion is maximum efficiency. Now you probably notice this RPM is slowly going upwards. Why? That's because we've leveled off and we're accelerating. So what I'm going to actually do before we play with our mixture some more is I'm going to back the throttle off a teeny tiny bit until we go ahead and get this at a nice constant speed. Notice in the real world what you'd probably do is you'd want to level off then start fitting with the mixture because again you want to, you, this can change depending on so many different situations. Again, I'm just working this very, very gently right now. I'm noticing my gas temperature is very high. My fuel is pretty good. My RPM is high again. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull the mixture back just a teeny tiny bit and see if we can get the exhaust gas temperature to go any higher and see if we can get the mixture RPM to go up. Oh, did you see how it dropped? That means that we've actually over leaned the engine. So in this case, we're not giving it enough fuel for however much we're mixing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push the mixture in a little tiny bit. Do you see how RPM came back up again? And you also notice that our exhaust gas temperature came up a teeny tiny bit, just a little more. Okay, do you see our RPM came up just a teeny tiny bit? We're now back to peak combustion because we're producing the maximum power as well as having the peak exhaust gas temperature. Once you find that sweet spot where you're absolutely at maximum, you wanna enrich in the mixture just a teeny tiny bit more. And you can see in this case, I've actually produced more power. So we were actually running very lean there. You can see why this is so tricky. Oh, that's even better. So we're producing even more power than we were a minute ago. Give it just a teeny tiny bit more. Okay, did you see how my exhaust gas temperature suddenly came down a little bit? That simply indicates that we went from peak combustion and now our engine has a little extra fuel for what it's actually set to. Now, one thing I will say is uh, now that we've got that all set, we, got it, we can go ahead if we wanted to actually reduce our RPM just a teeny tiny bit to get us back down to whatever our cruise power is without any ill effects to the actual aircraft. Now, when are we going to have to make more adjustments to that? Well, in the real world, every time we change altitude, we're going to have to adjust the mixture a teeny tiny bit. Keep in mind, if you start descending, since we're only at 3,500 feet, we could probably jam that mixture handle all the way forward without any real consequence. In the real world, by the way, you'd almost never pull it out this far at this point. This is just the way it's done in Flight Simulator. Now, I've got some good news for everybody. If this is a difficult process, Flight Simulator actually built in a system to help do the mixture for you. If I have to practice press escape, go to controls. I'm going to go flip over to my joystick here. I actually have a button. Let me search by input real quick. Ooh, I'm going to make sure if you click the correct one first. I've got to go all the way over here. There it is. I actually have this thing that says set best mixture. I have a button I can press. Now here's where things are going to get a little interesting. So I've set the mixture based on what I know about flying aircraft in the real world and what I've read up on things like that. Watch what happens if I press set best. Notice my RPM came down. The best mixture that Flight Simulator predicts is actually slightly richer than the mixture that I found by finding the peak combustion and actually going back. So if you remember, it was about 59%. So I can come back over here, 
and super duper gently go back to what it was. And now I go right back up to what I was. And I'm also saving more fuel than what Flight Simulator used. Personally, on some aircraft, especially aircraft with constant speed propellers, I basically live based on that set best mixture. You know, these aren't real engines, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Keep in mind, some aircraft do not have exhaust gas temperature gauges, and some aircraft have constant speed propellers. And unless there's some way of listening to the engine, which is also a very common way of telling you got the mixture correctly, it's very difficult to accurately set those. If you run into an aircraft like that, I highly recommend binding a key to that set best mixture in order to prevent that from happening. All right, let's go ahead and descend now. So I'm gonna set my selected altitude down to 1,500 feet. This is a really easy aircraft to fly, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set the uh, no uh, vertical speed button. And I'm gonna go down at 500 feet per minute so I don't blow my eardrums. Okay, as you descend, you are going to have to push this handle forward in order to provide more fuel because the air is going to get thicker. So now how do we deal with that? Well, it's basically the same process. So I'm just gonna go ahead and gently push it forward. Again, once we cross that 3000 mark, we can go ahead and do it. But keep in mind, if I didn't touch my RPM, I can still sit here and actually play with the mixture control even though we are descending. Normally in a Cessna 172, when you descend, you're gonna back your throttle out and you're basically just gonna stick the nose over and kind of go down like that. But since I'm not exactly in a hurry, as you can probably see over by that, I'm not really worried about that. One thing that you really want to be careful with with mixture is leaving it in the bad, not the bad position, leaving it in a lean position when you land the plane. Now, let's say, for example, I was flying up at six or 7,000 feet and my mixture was all the way out here to 39%, which is significantly lean. My exhaust gas temperature actually dropped because we're so lean, the engine's barely burning. You're going to end up with very high cylinder temperatures because it's barely got enough fuel to cool itself. Now, let's say I was coming in for a landing and I'm like, full power. Now, of course, we got full power. Why? On account of the fact that if you take a look at my current airspeed, I'm going so fast, the air moving through the blades is actually giving me my full power right now. It's not actually full power, it's significantly reduced. Now, if I were to sit here and push my mixture in, my RPM would actually have come up. Now, you're probably going, wait a minute, the RPM just went down. Yeah, because not only did we go past our peak combustion point, but we also went way past it into the rich zone. Now there's way too much fuel and it's actually cooling the engine back down again. So it's an interesting little dynamic that you're gonna have to kind of get through. There's no easy rule of thumb with this tool. Like I said, generally you're gonna be backing it out a little bit, checking your exhaust gas temperature to see what it settles at, and then seeing what your RPM settles at. I'm actually over revving the engine. I could pull the power back a little bit. We made things a little too efficient. So hopefully this helps as far as that goes. Uh, don't forget when you are landing the aircraft, if your altitude is in a situation where you're under 3000, make sure you push that mixture control all the way forward before you land in case you need that extra full power to take off. And again, like I said with that best button, I'll go ahead and push that best button again. You can see it pushed it in significantly and I actually had an RPM drop because of it. So it's very interesting to see kind of their automatic version versus the way that I was taught how to do it versus you know what the actual reality of the aircraft is. So it's just just something to kind of watch out for. There's actually an assist built into Flight Simulator that you can make automatic mixture. It's awesome because you can literally watch this handle move over time. Also note that a lot of aircraft now have something called FADEC that's full authority digital engine control. That sets the mixture automatically. That means if I started grabbing and playing with this red handle, nothing would happen to the engine because the engine does it for itself. It would only be in an emergency situation where you'd have to manually set that engine mixture. So hopefully this is helpful, especially coupled with the um, RPM video as well. These things are just things you gotta kinda watch out for and kinda play with to feel out. Always read what the manufacturer says. A lot of times they'll say peak EGT, and they'll say something like go 50 degrees Celsius past peak EGT, in which case you'd find where this needle stops going to the right, then give it a little bit of extra red handle forward to go ahead and do it. Sometimes you'll see lean of peak. Lean of peak simply means you're going to find it and you're gonna pull the handle out just a teeny tiny bit more in order to, again, go lean because your air fuel mixture is now more air than its fuel at that point. Of course, as anybody point out, that's always true. You don't have one to one. It's like 14.5 or 13.5 or 12.5 to one as far as your air fuel mixture goes. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, like I said, there's some interesting little quirks in the way that it works, but it's just a matter of uh, trying as many different situations as you can with it and kind of getting comfortable. I'm sure some people out there will build themselves a chart that 75 is the correct percentage if you're at 1500 feet. Of course, I'll do the auto mixture button. Notice it went to 86. So it's almost about 10% mixture per thousand feet is kind of the way that I'll flight simulator is doing it. If anything, 1,500 feet and I've knocked 15 out of 100%, that's probably not a bad guesstimate. Other than that, enjoy.